In the center of the Indian Ocean lies an island known for its sandy beaches, marine life, and blue waters. Join us as we explore the beautiful and tranquil island of the Maldives, home of the Maldivians. The story of the Maldives begins with the earliest Buddhist settlers from India and Sri Lanka, on the island that landed there around 5 BC. Buddhism would become the mainstay religion of the Maldives until the 12th century. It should also be noted that the history of the Maldives is broadly connected with that of the history of the Indian subcontinent and Sri Lanka. The presence of Arab traders in the Indian Ocean helped to spread Islam in the region. Albeit connected to the Indian subcontinent, the Maldives was far enough to not be influenced by the mainland and had its own course. The Buddhist king Dovemi converted to Islam in 1153, which furthered the spread of the new religion across the Maldives. One of the most famous Muslim explorers, the North African Ibn Battuta, even lived there during the 1340s. By the 16th century, European seafarers started making their way towards Asia in general, looking for trade and new opportunities. One such faction, the Portuguese managed to forcibly claim the Maldives for themselves from 1558 to 1573. By the 17th century, the protectorate of the Maldives changed hands, the Dutch being awarded with the honor of overseeing the Sultanate under the jurisdiction of Ceylon, or modern-day Sri Lanka. After the British possession of Ceylon in 1796, the Maldives became a protectorate under the British crown in 1887. By 1932, a democratic constitution was created and proclaimed with the islands remaining a sultanate. A republic was established in 1953, but it went back to being a sultanate again almost immediately after 98% of the population voted for its return. However, the British maintained its presence on the island up until the 1960s. Most of the internal affairs and politics were influenced by the British presence on the island, and the newly established republic started to question this arrangement. One such Maldivian was the Prime Minister, Ibrahim Nasser, a number of pro-Britain secessionists sprung up along the islands. This included the United Suvadive Republic, which benefited mainly from British support. However, these movements were short-lived as British support faltered in 1961. By 1965, the Maldives gained full independence from the British. A new republic was inaugurated in 1968, and the Sultanate was by all means abolished. The last of the British military presence left on March 29, 1976, marking the Independence Day of the Maldives. Despite being free of the influence of Britain, the Maldives became part of the Commonwealth of Nations in 1982, of which the United Kingdom is also a member. The current situation in the Maldives is one of modernization and democratization. The inadequacy of its internal justice and political systems necessitated changes. The leading figure in this modernization is Maumoon Abdul Gayoom. A new constitution was established in 2008, which allowed for greater checks and balances in the country, allowed women to run for president, and empowered the judiciary and legislative branches of the government. The Maldives was also one of the most affected during the 2004 Indonesian tsunamis, which prompted new measures regarding climate change in the country. The Maldives currently has a GDP of $6 billion, reaching the level of an upper-middle income country in the 2010s. The mainstay of Maldivian agriculture are fruits and vegetables, nuts, other meats, tomatoes, bananas, maize, pulses, coconuts, and papayas. However, fishing happens to be the biggest source of income for many of the Maldivian population. As such, it is one of the biggest industries in the country. Tuna is the main catch of the entirety of the industry as this fish thrives on the waters surrounding the island itself. 
The Maldives also has a growing tourism industry, being part of international cruise ship lanes. Other industries on the island include, but are not limited to, fish processing, shipping, boat building, coconut processing, woven mats, rope, handicrafts, and coral and sand mining. The flag of the Maldives is made up of a crescent moon in the middle on a green background, surrounded by a red border. The red symbolizes the blood spilled by the heroes and martyrs in defense of the island and their willingness to sacrifice. The green symbolizes peace and prosperity. And the white crescent signifies the Islamic influence on the island and its authority. The Maldives lies on two atolls. It is made up of around 1,000 coral islands, some inhabited, some not. It has a total land area of 300 square kilometers, or 116 square miles. The capital of the islands is Male. Most of the islands are made up of corals and white sandy beaches with tropical forests dotting the bigger islands. The islands are generally flat, which means they are prone to flooding. The temperature on the island is generally tropical, hot, and humid. There are only two seasons present on the island, wet and dry. The average maximum temperature of the island is 32 degrees Celsius or 90 degrees Fahrenheit, while the average minimum temperature is 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. The Maldives also hosts a diverse ecosystem, particularly aquatic fauna. Whale sharks, turtles, sharks, and 2,000 species of fish inhabit the waters surrounding the coral islands. Along the islands, there also exists a plethora of animals, including reptiles like the Oriental Garden Lizard and the Indian Wolf Snake. Being a nation made up of thousands of islands, it's no surprise to know that mangrove forests also dot many of the islets. Although a small island nation, the Maldives hosts a large population numbering around 390,000 people, mostly residing in male, meaning 42% of the population is urbanized. People born in the Maldives or who reside there are called Maldivian. The population is a homogenous mixture of Sinhalese, Dravidian, Arab, Australasian, and African. This is most probably due to the location of the islands themselves, being a crossroads for civilizations and different ethnic peoples. The entirety of the population is Sunni Muslim. Here are some dishes you can try out when you visit the Maldives. These dishes not only offer delightful flavors, but also provide a glimpse into the Maldivian culinary traditions and cultural heritage. First off, we have garudia, a sumptuous soup made from fresh fish and salt. This simple yet flavorful broth is a staple in Maldivian cuisine, often served with rice, lime, chili, and onions, showcasing the island nation's reliance on the bounty of the ocean. Another great meal to try is mashuni, shredded smoked tuna mixed with grated coconut, onions, and chili. As one of the most common and beloved breakfast dishes in the Maldives, it reflects the everyday life of Maldivian fishmongers and their abundant catch. Speaking of tuna, you should definitely try masroshi, a delicious snack featuring chapati bread stuffed with smoked tuna and coconut. This savory treat highlights the Maldivian love for combining fresh seafood with tropical flavors, making it a popular choice for both locals and visitors. If you have a sweet tooth, try fried yams. These yams are deep fried to perfection, creating a crispy and satisfying snack. Often enjoyed with a variety of dipping sauces, they offer a tasty glimpse into the island's snack culture and its penchant for simple yet delectable foods. Now let's talk about influential people from the Maldives. Let me know if you are familiar with some of them. First, we have Maumun Abdul Gayoom, the president of the Maldives from 1978 to 2008, one of the world's longest-serving presidents. 
We also have Mohammed Amin Didi, one of the pioneers of the Maldives modernization, and who helped usher in the emancipation of women in the country. Lastly, Hassan Ugail, known for his work on facial recognition, face aging, emotional analysis, and lie detection. If you enjoyed this video on the Maldives, you'll love this next one.